chivalry emerged in the 8th century, about 1200 years ago, with the appearance of a mounted army of nobles who swore allegiance to their ruler. When we talk about medieval knightly battles, we think of the warrior in movies about them. Young, handsome, in shining armor, with a banner in his hand, chained from head to foot in shiny iron armor, with a sword at the ready. In reality, it was much more down to earth. The armor made the knight very uncomfortable. It was very difficult to wear it for long periods, and it was very difficult to fight in it, too. At first, the armor covered only the most vulnerable parts of the knight's body, and from the 15th century, the whole body. Such armor was worn by warriors in Europe during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. The main thing in chivalric behavior was nobility. The codes of etiquette and behavior were strict. A knight was not allowed to harm a woman, he was always to treat her with respect and protect her from danger. He was also not allowed to deal with traitors. A knight had to fast, abstain from worldly temptations, and make donations to the church. As for chivalrous behavior on the battlefield, all aspects of chivalrous dignity were instantly forgotten. Many of them became ruthless robbers and murderers. After all, knights were first and foremost warriors, so they preferred to avoid death than to be noble with the enemy and end up being killed. Initially, jousting was just entertainment, a kind of training before a battle, which was held in the period between wars. Over time, duels became a sport and simply a popular social event, since there were not so many wars anymore. No knight appeared on the battlefield without armor, which had to be custom-made. At first, the armor was regular soft clothing and chainmail. Later armor elements were added until the armor became fully armored. The quality and power of the armor served not only for protection but also as a status symbol. The better the armor, the more important the knight was. The armor consisted of under-armor clothes, body protection, helmet, shoulder protection, shoulder pads, elbow protection, elbow pads, arm protection, elbow pads, wrist protection, and leg protection, sabotons, knee pads, shins. All these parts were attached to the under armor clothes with laces or straps or tightened tightly on the body. The knight first put on his under armor, which was usually made of several layers of dense fabric with soft padding. Then these layers were stitched and waxed on top for strength. It happened that such a thick shroud, with pieces of chain mail or small plates of metal sewn into it, was used as full-fledged protection for the body. Ancient Rome wore chainmail, a light armor made of woven metal rings. The chainmail was used either as the main protection or as under-armor clothes worn over regular clothes. Quite often they used the following combination, quilted jacket, then chainmail, and on top of its armor. All this equipment had a lot of weight and limited the knight's movements. Then the knight put on the full armor of metal plates. A complete set of armor included a cuirass, shoulder pads, helmet, armbands, gauntlets, knee pads, shin guards, and sabotons. Sometimes knights also used super armor, a garment worn over the armor to protect against heat, wind, and sand. The most common weapons of knights were heavy swords and spears. Swords were rarely sharpened to a sharpness. There was no need for sharpening, as the sword quickly blunted against the enemy's armor anyway. Therefore, relying more on physical strength, a knight wielded it mostly as an axe. Knights' spears were massive and heavy, so they were used only for ramming at full gallop. Keeping in mind that knights were just people, it's normal to ask how they used the bathroom with their armor on. There were tournament armor and battle armor. Tournament armor, with decorative trim and embossed decorations, was very heavy, weighing up to 50 kilograms. Knights put on and took off such armor with the help of a squire or a servant. The servant was a common thing for them, as all the knights were very rich. The armor was very expensive, it was created individually, based on the anatomical features of the customer, and adjusted to his figure. Armor, weapons, horses, and servants all cost a lot of money. Knights were considered an important component of any army, so rulers had to provide for their livelihood. For this reason, the lower classes could not afford a complete set of equipment. More often than not, they were limited to a simple chainmail or helmet. 
The knights tried to do all their business before the tournament because the tournament armor was completely covered. And if a knight had to go to the toilet during the competition, he had to defecate right in his armor. Combat armor was lighter than tournament armor. This allowed the knight to be more mobile on the battlefield. During military battles, the knight had to walk right under himself, only during long battles, and it was not considered shameful or humiliating at all. In the Middle Ages, there was even an advantage in this, it was believed that the ammoniacal smell deterred vermin. To avoid sepsis when wounded in the stomach, knights coped with their natural needs before battle so that the digestive tract would be empty. During the Crusades, knights had to pee on the move, right in their armor, and because of this, many soldiers did not live to fight and died on the road from exhaustion, not being able to withstand the strain. Knights fought on horseback, so the lower part of their equipment was not encased in iron armor. Instead of pants over their undergarments and pantaloons, they wore special stockings that were tied at the waist with ropes. Their private parts were covered by a codpiece made of triangular canvas cloth. It looked like a pouch and was a pocket that was tied to the stockings with cords. Then the knight put on the iron armor. The knight did not need to take everything off when he had little need, it was enough to take off the codpiece. Later the codpiece began to be covered with a metal overlay, which was much larger than necessary for comfort. At the turn of the 14th and 15th centuries, when knights were at the height of their fame, there was no hygiene at all. People lived in completely unsanitary conditions and hardly ever washed. A person washed, or rather washed only superficially, only three times in life, at birth, before marriage, and after death. The strict religion considered it a sin to contemplate one's naked body while washing. And fleas and lice were found not only among the poor but also among the upper class, even kings. As a consequence, life expectancy was very low. Waste in medieval cities was thrown directly onto narrow streets. Lack of hygiene, fleas, rats, all this led to the development of epidemics, including the plague pandemic. This affected the knights as well. All with bearded faces, the knights did not wash for many months, also not more than three times a year. There was a smallpox epidemic in Europe at the time, so the faces of the knights were often disfigured by the scars of the disease. It was the knights who brought the custom of washing to medieval Europe, borrowing it from the Saracens. They had no dentists, so teeth were one of the sore spots. By the age of 30, finding a knight with teeth was problematic. They also had bodily parasites under their armor, which the knights did not even try to fight. For centuries, knights have been the strongest warriors on the battlefield. It was believed that no one could ever defeat them. However, the invention of the crossbow in the 12th century threatened their undeniable strength. Arrows fired from the crossbow could pierce metal armor, and a knight with only armor and combat skills became a common target for a warrior with a crossbow. Soon, especially when cannons and gunpowder were invented, the time of invincible knights was finally over. Since 1560 chivalry ceased to exist as a military term.